Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'll show you how I drew this artwork of Gura from Hololive. So, it's, it's been a while, um, <laughs> I've definitely had a lot of, uh, struggles medically, but things are finally back to normal, um, I'm making regular art and content again, it's just taken a very long time. Um, sorry so much for the wait. Um, but yeah, so for this artwork I had a, a reference that I thought was a lot of fun. I didn't want to do the uh, the pose exactly as I saw it because I've said this many times. Um, just because you're referencing a pose does not mean you don't try to make it your own. Um, uh, another thing I'd also like to point out is the goal for this artwork was something that looked very um, dynamic. The issue that I came across was I had no freaking idea what to do with the background. I had a pose and that was it. I also wanted to make like kind of a fun dress, this weird, uh, very flowy looking dress. Um, and I think I did a good job. So when we get to that, it's definitely nice. Uh, I did good on the shoes this time. I'm actually very proud of myself for that. So uh, pat's on the back for me, I guess. But yeah, it's it's definitely more of my, my a fun pose that I've done here, which I don't usually do. Um, the composition, as you could probably tell from watching this video, was a mixed bag because I really didn't know what I was doing, and I'll, I'll be completely honest about that. I wish I had some, like, crazy secret to tell you about how I figured out the pose, but the reality was much more sad, and it was, dear god, what am I doing? I feel like I'm failing miserably. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, as we go further into the sketch, you'll start seeing that uh, the idea that I'm going for with this dress is kind of, think of like uh, almost a shrine maiden outfit or kind of a cross between a ball gown and a, um, and almost like a Japanese traditional wedding dress. So it's, it's definitely fun like that. Uh, you did notice the time skip that, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't your imagination. I accidentally forgot to hit record again. I'm so sorry. Um, but you kind of get the gist and the idea. I definitely didn't hide the hands this time, which is good because hands are super important. They're very expressive. It's okay to be lazy sometimes, but lately I've been going, I've just been way too lazy with hands and I, I apologize for that. Um, so yeah. Now, I don't know why I went so hard on the, the head and the hair, even though this was just a sketch. I really made it cleaner than I usually do, which is almost distracting when everything else is so messy, so oops. But um, now we're getting into the coloring. You'll notice I adjust the composition just a bit. And this is about the part where I realized that this might look good as kind of like a card or a like either a trading card or kind of like a poster. So I might actually sell this artwork just because I can like maybe get some holographic foil for like the really bright whites and really make it look almost like a gotcha where like you you uh, spin the wheel and you get a you get a surprise SSR. <laughs> but yeah, I think it turned out all right. We add a multiplayer on, layer on top and we're gonna start planning out the lighting using light carving. Now, uh, for those who have been watching me for a while, you know what light carving is. For those who are new, allow me to explain it to you. Light carving is where you stick a multiply layer or a darken layer on top of the base colors and you use an eraser to make the light appear. Now I'm going for some add glow here to kind of like plan out the uh, lighting for this artwork and it looks nice. Um, I was going to go with a background with kind of like a floral design but I just didn't really think it looked good. And I'll be the first to admit that. I just like, I didn't like it. It didn't look great. Is about this artwork like 90% of it is just freaking uh, like going in blind and hoping to god it turns out good so I, I shouldn't have been doing that and that's my mistake um, by the way if you liked this video and you want to see more of my thoughts and processes on my artworks you can hit the subscribe button hit the like comment hit the bell hit 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 uh, helps me out a whole lot and it really really means a lot to me when you do um, also, one thing I would like to point out is I am still working on a few tutorials, uh, including the eye tutorial, a face tutorial, and some tutorial on how to do hair. Um, they're a bit more complicated and require a lot more work on my part, so they usually take me longer, so I'm sorry you've had to wait so long, but bear with me, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs>
I use a, a hue and saturation to make a grayscale to kind of check the color balance and like make sure everything pops correctly. Um, I should have done that on the final product because I feel like some of the values were a bit off. And you can tell looking at the artwork right now, I'm still trying to figure out what the crud to do with the background. <laughs> This is definitely what happens when you go in with zero plan and your brain just cannot figure out what to do with the background. Um, this is the point where I finally was like, oh, well, Guru is a shark, so why don't I add little sharks all around? And that was definitely the way to go. It definitely worked a lot better, and I'm super proud with it. I, I tried to make the sharks, even though they're, they're uh, not super prominent, like, I wanted them to be just a little bit cute, you know what I mean? Um, Sharks can be cute, as evidenced by Gura. So now it's starting to add the shading of the sharks, and we are fully planned out. I have some bubbles to make it look like we're underwater, and now I'm starting to get a feel for what this artwork is going to be. So we're about to approach the line art portion, and I've sped that up as fast as I possibly can, because there was a lot of lines in this one, and I've realized the more I've done this that um, the line art phase takes way too long, and People are gonna click off, you know, it's like, line art really isn't that fun to watch. People are come for the rendering, so I will be leaving timestamps if you want to get straight into the rendering in the future, so I hope that works, thank you. So I like this artwork, but it has a ton of lace, and lace is so, so annoying to draw. It's so time consuming, I always feel like I'm not doing it right, but I'm getting better. I'm definitely getting better at drawing lace. and. Things are looking more frilly, but at the same time, they still look good. So I'm, I'm very satisfied with how well I'm starting to get laced down. It makes me more confident to try to go in and do more like dresses and more frilly stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely an exciting time for me. I'm starting to feel like I, I'm not lost every time I do a new artwork. Um, I feel like I'm finally figuring things out, and that's so like exciting for me personally. And I really hope that in the future, with your creative endeavors, that you will also get to a point where things start stop feeling um, intimidating or challenging, and you can just get in there, have fun, and do it. it. It's taken me a very long time to get where I am now, and just because it takes me long doesn't mean it, you won't be faster. Um, I mean, heck, I've been drawing since I was in middle school, but I'm 29 now, and... I only started getting good like maybe four or five years ago when I really started buckling down. And I only got to where I am now by constantly studying and practicing and just drawing as much as I possibly can, observing other artworks and professionals. You just have to keep really, really pushing and trying to improve yourself. It's, it's not easy. Um, it's one of those things you just have to constantly be trying to learn. Um, and that's something that is intimidating at the end of the day, but it's really, really worth it to get the fundamentals down and constantly just try to understand. So now we're on to the rendering. We're adding the base colors, and this is where things are going to start coming together. So I went for a very dark gray on the hair because I actually wanted specifically to um, make the whites or the brights of the hair stand out much more. So I had to add everything on top of it. Uh, the green background trick is to find holes in whatever you are coloring in. So anytime you feel like, oh, did I fill everything in? Did I, is everything correct? Switch between white background, green background, and black background, and that'll let you know if you're missing anything. So that should help you out a whole lot. So here we go, we're coloring the sharks now. If you'll notice, the, the top right shark is weirdly lopsided and crooked. I was like, what the crud did I do to that shark? It's definitely a uh, kind of not the best call, if I'm being honest. So now we're adding the shading. We are doing it with a multiply layer. I love multiply. Um, I don't always use multiply, but I, I prefer it personally. Just, I don't know why. It's just my favorite setting in the game. In the game. Hell, oh, come on. Um, no, in the, uh, program. So I need to add layers of shading to everything, make it look right. Have to make sure the, uh, inside of the skirt actually is separated from the, uh, character's leg. Is the sun out, but it's raining? It is. The sun is out, but it is raining. Well, that is interesting. 
So now we're starting to add all the details. Again, we are just using a purely the multiply layer. I haven't even begun rendering the skin yet. Uh, this is the first time I haven't started with the skin, but I think that's because I wanted to tackle the, the main portion first, which was the, uh, the dress. Um, I do think the dress is a bit too busy. I wish I had kind of softened it up and like eased back on the levels on the on the uh, dress specifically. But now things are starting to come together. We are doing the hair. We're making sure that everything follows the correct lighting and sources. And here pretty soon we're going to start adding the uh, color to the sharks, um, render them out. And yeah, it's starting to look really, really good. I, I ended up adding the uh, the bubbles back again later as well. So yeah, there it is. So here's the part where I start doing the eyes and we are finishing up. Now we're adding some effects like a hard light and blurred background, some add glow to make it pop, a tonal curve to make the colors a bit better. And now we're adding kind of that uh, reflection on the top of the water and the bottom. And finally a nice little uh, white box to make it look almost trading card-esque. And there we go. All right, there's the finished product. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps me out a whole lot. See you guys next time. Bye.